¿Cómo va? ¿Sí, ¿Todo bien? ¿Estás going to do one in English? Por, no. <laughs> Portugués es mejor. I'm not going to translate one question. Portugués. How are you feeling? You can say how are you feeling. You can do that English. I don't feel good. <laughs> For English. No, no. That was good, That's though. That was really good. good. Yeah. Sounded really good, right? That was. <laughs> Good. That's good. No, that's I know. Good. No, I expect it now. You sound like you're working hard at it. That's good. Yeah. 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 All right, guys, go ahead. Uh, Y'all had a, uh, the check. You and, and um, Babara had the challenge of trying to stop uh, Mihalovic against Montreal. Now Shakiri and Chicago comes. What uh, challenges does he present? Que tuvieron un reto de parar a Mihalovic en Montreal y ahora es Shakiri. ¿Qué cómo te sientes? Bom, sabemos que foi bastante difícil né, marcar o Mihalovic, é um jogador que tem muita qualidade também agora para esse jogo. A gente sabe também da qualidade do, do Shaqiri, é um jogador que tem uma qualidade incontestável, todo mundo sabe. Então, eu e o Barra sabemos que vai ser difícil marcar e a gente está ciente, vamos dar o nosso máximo dentro de campo. Uh, obviously, we all know about Mihalovic's uh, quality. It, it was tough to defend uh, over the weekend, and now we all know about the quality of Shaqiri. So Ibarra and I are aware that we have to, to defend and, and be focused and, and make sure that we play uh, one of our best games. Chicago doesn't score a lot, but it also doesn't give up a lot of goals. Are, do you anticipate them being a, a frustrating opponent? Eh, que Chicago no, no mete mucho golos, pero que tampoco eh, le hacen goles. Que, que si va a ser frustrante. Então, a gente não tem que pensar no, no time deles. A gente, sabe, a gente sabe que o time deles não vem no uma boa temporada ainda e a gente tem que focar na gente, a gente está focado no nosso trabalho é, de chegar em casa, na nossa casa, buscar esses três pontos que a gente perdeu no jogo passado, então nosso foco total é na gente e com certeza buscar os três pontos que é o mais importante. Yeah, uh, we cannot focus on, on Chicago, we need to focus on, on what we want to do and, and obviously we, we lost the points last time at home and we just have to focus on, on getting those three points this time around. Have y'all done anything different uh, in your preparation for defending set pieces this week that maybe y'all weren't doing in previous weeks? Você fez algo diferente em treino para balão parado, para defender defensivamente. Creio que todos todos nós agora nos modificamos alguns detalhes, né, que a gente sofreu do jogo passado e também de alguns jogos anteriores. Então a gente está trabalhando bastante nesse ponto na bola parada e creio que nesse jogo agora a gente vai fazer o possível para a gente não sofrer esse gol que a gente está tomando. Yeah, we're working a lot on um, past mistakes that we've made uh, on video. It's a, it's a focus right now on defending set pieces, and hopefully um, we can defend every set piece this, this time uh, on the game Saturday very well. Mateus, cuando, cuando no entra el balón como quisieran, ¿cuán importantes son los balones parados para ustedes atacando? É muito, a gente fica um pouco frustrado é, por criar bastante não só nesse jogo passado, mas nos outros jogos dentro de casa também. Então a gente está com foco no, nos treinos, que a bola vai entrar. A gente está passando por um momento meio difícil de a gente tentar e tentar e a bola não está entrando. Eu creio que nesse jogo agora a gente vai continuar nesse ritmo para poder, quem sabe, fazer o primeiro gol no primeiro tempo e, e sair essa, essa zica que a gente está tendo nesses jogos. Can you repeat your question so I repeat How frustrating is it when the ball just isn't going in for this team? Yeah, we obviously we have to focus on, on getting the ball in the back of the net. We we try, try, try every game. So yes, it's frustrating what is not going in, but we're gonna continue. We've been training uh, different things uh, in order to focus on, on scoring goals. So we, we will try. Para los jugadores es difícil en este momento querer, o sea, no querer cambiar. O sea, saben que tienen un, un sistema de juego, un estilo de juego, pero cuando no están ganando los partidos, hay momentos donde piensan que deben cambiar. ¿O cuán importante es mantenerse? Yo creo que lo más importante es mantener el foco. ¿no? Gente, creo que nuestro equipo está jugando muy bien y estamos apenas pecando en pequeños detalles. ¿no? Y a gente está, estamos jugando bien. É, oh, perdão. Não, não, estamos, para jogando... Para ah, okay. não, não. estamos jogando bem, é, é nítido, todo mundo está vendo que a gente está criando bastante oportunidade e vamos continuar atacando, como a gente sempre sabe, com o Luiz, com o Thiago, com o Marcelino e qualquer jogador que estiver ali a gente vai dar nosso melhor dentro de campo. A pergunta era, pressure to change what perhaps isn't working when you're a player on the field or do you stick to what you're being taught? 
No, I believe we're playing very well. Um, we're missing on the little details. We consider on those little mistakes. Um, but I think that we're going to continue to attack the way we've been. Uh, Tiago, Marcelino, Luis, they've done a good job. And we're just going to keep going until until uh, the goals start coming. How would you say the team morale is kind of during just this six-game unbeaten streak? Is there any kind of frustration, anything going on within the team? Que, que como se eh, explica la moral del equipo, que no hemos ganado en seis juegos. A gente, a gente fica frustrado um pouco, né, por criar muitas chances e a gente não conseguir converter em gols. No, the team is very frustrated. Obviously, we've uh, created a lot of chances, as you guys can see. So that's frustrating that the ball is not going in the back of the net. Mas é esse é o caminho. A gente pensa que é o caminho é esse. O mais importante é continuar tentando, tentando, que logo, logo, quando começar a sair o gols, creio que a gente vai ter bastante êxito. But this is the way. We're just gonna keep going. Once uh, one or two goals start falling, more goals will come. But this is a way, and we're going to continue pushing to get those results. Did your injury happen on that shot against DC United? Is that when the hamstring did whatever it did? Que cuando você se lesionó, eh, fue cuando pateó o antes? No, fue cuando Jake recibió la bola. When e, Jake received the ball? Eh, ahí yo hice un movimiento de izquierda para derecha y fue que yo sentí. Eh, cuando tuve la oportunidad de chutar para el gol, chuté, pero ya había sentido. Ya, I did a movement from left to right, and I had already felt it before I shot, and then when I shot it, obviously, yeah. really, really felt it. Okay. Mateus, eh, hablando de Jake, cambia de equipo oficialmente hoy para Orlando. ¿Qué tipo de compañero era? O sea, ¿qué van a extrañar de él, tanto como persona, empezando, sí. y también en la cancha? Para a gente, todos os jogadores são uma surpresa, porque ele é um jogador muito importante dentro de campo, fora de campo, uma pessoa extraordinária, sempre está sorrindo, sempre está feliz. Então, sentimos um pouco a perda dele, que é um jogador muito importante. E também espero que ele possa continuar a carreira dele, tendo sucesso no Orlando, onde, onde ele for também. E só tenho a desejar felicidade para ele e continuar trabalhando firme. Well, just what... You know, talking about Jake Moroni's trade, what do you, what we, what will they miss about him as a person? What are they missing now that he's not on the field? We were, we were really surprised. Uh, all the players with the trade. Um, he's an important player. He was an important player for the squad. Uh, he is a really, really good person, really good human being. He's always happy, always smiling. Um, all we can say is uh, congrats and good luck in, in his new journey with Orlando. And he, he wish, uh, I wish uh, all the success for Jake and his career. Que você pensa que qual é a razão por la que não metemos eh, colo no último partido? Oh, eu acho que os times eles estão estudando bastante, creio, na maneira que a gente está jogando. Somos um time muito versátil, jogamos tanto por dentro, tanto por fora. Então, há momentos no partido que a gente está pressionando também e ele se mete tudo atrás, então é um pouco difícil. É, tem que ter paciência e creio que a gente está falhando um pouco nos detalhes que onde a gente está sofrendo os gols, né? Mas a gente vai continuar tentando e tentando por lado, por dentro jogar, porque a gente sabe a qualidade que a gente tem dentro de campo. É um pouco frustrante a gente não poder fazer os gols com os números que a gente tem, mas a gente vai continuar fazendo o trabalho duro que a gente está sempre fazendo. Like I say, uh, it's very frustrating for us. Obviously, not not scoring many goals, but we're a versatile team, versatile team who we can go inside, outside. The quality of the team, everyone knows. Um, all the defending uh, players know the quality of our players uh, on the front. Um, the teams have been defending on a low block. Uh, we just got to keep pushing. Um, like I said, it's very frustrating for the team, just like for the fans. Uh, but we're going to continue and everyone uh, on the other teams defend us in a way because they know our quality. Any, any last questions before we bring coach? All right. Thanks, Mateus. Thank you. Good afternoon. Buenas tardes. How are you? Hello, hello. 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 Uh, he said goodbye to his teammates, so uh, we, we wish him the best in Orlando. This was he didn't request a trade for playing time or anything like that. This was no. just purely okay. No, no. And, and you've talked about next man up with Mulroney gone. 
who, who is the next man up uh, at that spot that he typically played? Yes, we have multiple options there. We felt that we have some flexibility with some players, especially coming back from injury. For example, Caleb Wiley. We obviously, if we need a left winger, Caleb has done a very good job in there. Uh, if we need something on the right, obviously, you have always Brooks Lennon going there. Matchup Troll is coming back soon. Okay. So we have a few, even Ronaldo can play mm -hmm. out as a winger there, like he did that in Mexico. So we feel like we are comfortable in that position and, and, and we can go from there. Um, have, are y'all doing anything different regarding defending set pieces this week that maybe y'all haven't done in training in the past to try to f fix that issue? Yes, we did. We did. We've been training a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Somebody <laughs> emailed me this question, and it, it's an interesting and odd question. Y'all are a short team, you've said a few times. How do you work on defending taller teams when you don't have tall players. Are you bringing academy kids up to work on it? How, how, what do you do? <laughs> well, we've been putting, obviously, Jackson is tall. Alex DeJohn is not probably not super tall, but he right. has some height and he jumps well. We put even Rob Valentino okay. there. Uh, it's, it's not about, for me, the height only. It's obviously the concentration and, uh, and working together and the intensity and the mentality that we put on set pieces on in everything we do in football. But specifically on that topic, I feel, I feel like it's more the application because it's, uh, you can concede goals, men marking, they can do blocks on you, you can lose your mark and then you can concede a goal. You can uh, concede a goal on zonal marking. It's not about the tactic, it's about uh, the application of, of those tactics and how we can work all together to, to, to keep a clean sheet from set pieces. So it's more about that. So today we work more about the mentality. Obviously, we adjust certain things, but uh, we talk more about the intensity and the amount of you know concentration that, that we put in, in those moments. And flipping it to the other side of the field, uh, just the difficulty in creating quality chances you referenced in, uh, in the last game. What is can you do in training to improve that, or is it just probabilities evening out? Yes, we, we train, obviously. Uh, couple reminders on how to attack better in the final third. Uh, a couple, I feel like the last three games, we've been controlling the tempo of the game. We've been controlling pretty much everything. Also, we did a very good job at keeping uh, clear chances from the run of play from Montreal. They didn't have almost anything. Right. They had everything through set pieces. Uh, so I felt that we also controlled that side of, of, the, of the field. Uh, obviously, offensively, we need to find a little bit more rhythm with the attacking players we have and try to find better movements, more runs in behind. So we put a couple of reminders this week and hopefully we can see something different this, this game. How's Joseph's progress? Good. He's progressing very good. He's doing uh, uh, some double sessions and uh, he's progressing good. In individual sessions? Like on the field or are you talking about physical therapy? No, not on the field. Still in the gym and still on that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so to be clear, you're, you're sticking with zonal defending. Is was there, was there was there like any conversations about perhaps I giving mean, the players something new? Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't want to give tips to my good friend Ezra. So, <laughs> so you will see what we come up. Uh, uh, I'm I'm not big on making dramatic changes to to things. I think we haven't been that bad in certain moments. I think it's more the application of one or two things that we need to fix. But uh, you will see, and then we can talk after Saturday. <laughs> we can talk about what we did. What about set pieces in your favor? You know, when yes. goals aren't coming in the run of play, those become really important. Uh, has that been an emphasis, sort of being creative on that side? Yes, uh, it's a little bit the same. It's about, uh, you know, uh, how we can all work together with probably a, a small group as well, you know, to attack set pieces against uh, taller teams. Uh, but it's again the same. It's how weak. It's not just about me against you, who jumps more. It's about how we can work together to create space for others, or make tricks, or or only put a good delivery there, and and just see the odds of if we can get the momentum to gain the ball. So it's about that. But obviously, yes, we are going to work specifically on that tomorrow. And then the, just the psycho the psychology of your players. You know, when you've spoken a lot about the principle of play, sticking to it, you just said you don't want to make drastic changes. You've told us before you don't like to experiment if you don't have to. Has there been any difficulty in really communicating to the players that yes, okay, perhaps we're not doing what we want, we're not ending 
the way we want to, but we're going to stick to this style of play. Has that been part of the message? Yes, of course. I mean, I don't know how to coach other style of play. I don't know how to coach kicking just long balls and winning the second balls and 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 put 50-50 balls and try to secure the ball that way or create chances from just scrambled plays or random plays. I don't know how to coach that. Um, so I think I'm, I'm sticking to what we do very well. I think also that the response from the players is very good. They feel comfortable. Obviously, I ask feedback from them on how they feel playing this way. And they feel the same. They feel that it's just little details and a little bit more, sometimes good luck. And a little bit good luck and, you know, we put the, a goal in and then we continue attacking and then the priorities are going to be on our side. I, I, I'm, I'm no, doubt, no doubts about that. So uh, we're sticking with the same style. We're trying to play the same. We are one of the best teams in possession. We are trying to disrupt every team we, we face. That's how we attack. That's how we create chances. We are working, obviously, and create better chances. We are perfecting these. Again, the consistency on the lineups and how we can have more cohesion. Is part of of this growth, but but I think we're we're in, in 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 a good spot in terms of general playing style. Are you demanding more from the players right now? You've, you've talked about application, but are you are they feeling that pressure from you that like perhaps it's on them too? Yes, I mean at times I'm critical with them, obviously. At times I also reward them for the good things they're doing. So it's always the balance. It's not about winning or losing. It doesn't change a lot my way of coaching. Uh, I don't, I'm not that type of coach that when we win everything is great and I'm super passionate and, and oh yeah, very good now because there are things that we need to improve, to correct, to always get better. It's the same when we lose. I don't, I'm not always looking only for the main things that we need to improve to not lose in games. No, it, there are, we're doing a lot of good things. Let's just continue with that. Yes, let's tweak a few of the things that we're not doing well, but the process is the same regardless of, of we win three points or we lose three points. It's, it's the same. What time did you text Brian last night? Right after the <laughs> right after the, the whistle. Did you hear back from him yet? No, not yet. <laughs> uh, I'm sure he's pretty busy. He has also another game very soon and right. and uh, obviously he was all over the celebration, I'm sure. So very, very happy for him. Um, I asked you immediately <clears throat> after the Montreal game because you've talked about if one player is not producing, you don't hesitate to bring in someone else, and you said it was too early to think about that. Have you thought about that since, and might we see changes in the starting 11 on Saturday? You, you will see. You will see <laughs> again. Uh, my good friend Ezra might be looking at my conference, and I don't want to give any advantage, but I mean, uh, whether we continue with the same line, lineup or we make a few changes, I mean, the identity of the team you have seen that is is there. It doesn't matter who plays, we play the same way. We are trying the same type of things with little tweaks on positions and tactics, but uh, it's going to be the same Atlanta United style. Can you, how would you describe just the morale of this team during this unbeaten streak? I mean, there's a little bit of frustration, obviously, trying to get into the back of that, but and how do you kind of use that to your advantage with, through that frustration? Yes, that's that's probably a good positive to see is we are unbeaten at home, and, and that's also another positive of it's very hard to, to win in this league uh, when, when you play away. Uh, I think it's one of the most difficult leagues in the world to, to play away and because of the different conditions, weather, uh, uh, turf. Uh, so uh, we are confident that now we'll have a good amount of games at home. Hopefully that brings the confidence. We always need our fans to be there cheering for us, bringing energy. And I think the morale of the team just needs one victory, one good victory. And then the morale of the team is going to be high again. Uh, I don't think it's low as well. That's something that I like about my team is very mature. For, for the age that we have, players very young, but they're premature about things. And they know at times, you know, you struggle at the beginning, but that brings everyone together at times. And adversity at times build teams in a better way than success, and especially at the beginning of the seasons. Talking about Seattle, like, they are famous for doing that, like starting not great and then coming back stronger, because at times this adversity brings better communication and, and better things. So when you put all the dots together, then you're a better team at the end of the season. What's been kind of just the, the biggest challenge for you in these first 10 games? We battle a lot of injury, but like trying to move around. What's looking at these <coughs> past 10 games for you? Yes, I think that the inconsistency, uh, a lot of changes, red cards, suspension, players in the national team, uh, injuries, big injuries also, not just for the length of time, but for the type of personalities that we lost, like Ossie or, or Brad, I think even Joseph, like uh, there's been a lot of ups and downs with uh, lineups. 
and it's not my preference. Uh, but the positive about it is I, I had the opportunity to see other players like Caleb Wiley that is doing very good, Tyler Wolf, um, Amar Sedic, guys that even Ronald way he played at the beginning of the season. So I think there are positives in any situation and that's one of those that I can rely now more in other players that maybe at the beginning of the season, maybe you never thought they were having that amount of minutes. Luis, how can you get more out of him? It's his first start, obviously, coming back from injury, yeah. but he is the DP, he's a big money signing, there's a lot expected of him. How can he be better than what he showed on Montreal and Chicago on Saturday? I think he he's going to be better just by uh, uh, understanding better the movements of the other players around. It's the first shot he has with uh, Thiago. I think he really never played with him before. and. Uh, I think at times it's, it also depends on him, it's, it's also on him, it's also I'm trying to put him in the best areas for him to succeed and now it's up to his talent and his application and his desire to, to be the player that we think he is uh, and but also it takes time also to connect with the other ones, also Ronaldo, so the, out of the three closest players in his area, Brooks, uh, Thiago and Ronaldo, uh, two of them are new for him, so he needs to adapt to that. He needs to understand the movements, the timings from Ronaldo to running behind, the timings for Thiago to pass him the ball. Thiago has to understand his timing to running behind. So it's a lot of things, and that's not magical. It's not like you put three guys together and they're going to perform right away. So it takes time. Hopefully, uh, it takes it, it, it comes sooner rather than later, but I think it's coming and there are two talented players They're gonna connect if we are able to connect those talented players there. I think we're gonna be okay Why did he come off against Montreal? Was it Based on what you just said was it more tactical? It was both. It was a little bit trying to save him a little bit. It was the first start for him It was a big push already. I felt that uh, just, just, just the game wasn't coming to him as as we wanted. We wanted to change a little bit, but at the same time, it was saving him from playing 90 minutes the first time. You know, so a little bit of fitness levels and that. You, you talk about Ezra, that you know him well. What what do you expect from Chicago? You know, that what do you what have you seen so far? It looks like Heidel might get a get some minutes on Saturday too. Yeah, we've got some new players. So what's what's dangerous about that? Yeah, I expect a very well organized team, a team that know how they play. I think Ezra is a very good coach that that knows how to get the best out of the players, and uh, they're going to be pretty well organized. They're going to know how to find each other. They're going to know how to organize defensively as well. Uh, they have also very high quality players like Gaston Jimenez uh, and obviously Shakiri. <clears throat> if if Sivilko plays, like is another one, Jairo, the new signing. Uh, and obviously they had a few red cards, so we'll see what they come up in terms of lineups. But uh, they have a talented team, they have a very good coach, so we expect a big challenge for, for Saturday. And just last one at home, just how, how aggressive does the team need to be? How much in, are you expecting a lot more intensity? Should they come out and really impose themselves early against Chicago? Yes, I and mean, I, I don't know what you guys saw, but I think we were pretty aggressive against Montreal both offensively and defensively. I don't think uh, before the game everyone was rating Mihailovic as one of the best players in the league so far and we keep him quiet and kudos to my midfielders and my defenders. We, we keep Kyoto quiet as well. Uh, so uh, it was just the set pieces mainly. So, but after that I think we, we played very well against them and we were aggressive on the ball which is another way to be aggressive. We were also trying to break the lines very fast and we did that. It was just the final part, the final touch, but a lot of decision makings. We created a lot of situations where Thiago or Marcelino were in behind the midfielders and it was just the, the final pass into Luis or Ronaldo or Marcelino, Andrew Goodman, Brooks. So we just we just need that, that little piece of quality. Uh, that's how I feel. Uh, but uh, obviously at home, yes, we need to continue with that and come since the very beginning, be aggressive, trying to be on the front foot, hopefully get a reward early in the game as well. That helps. And then it's, it's also the game management because because we've been ahead of the last few games, uh, a few times we scored a goal and then kind of we go down a little bit. So we're going to talk about that with the team, about we score a goal, we continue and we go for the second one. We don't slow down. 
not even for a bit, and especially at home. Maybe away, you are winning. Maybe yes, you manage the tempo. Maybe a bit more possession. Yes, maybe because of the difficulties to win away. But at home, no. We need to go two, three, four, whatever it comes. We need to continue. So uh, I expect that, and the players know that. I think they know that, and, and it's going to be just a quick reminder before the game. Do you have to give any consideration to Wednesday uh, with your lineup and stuff uh, for Saturday? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Uh, I always try to look for, for the next match, and after that we will see if we are seeing certain things in this game that I can manage the squad and thinking Wednesday, for sure I yeah. kind of think about it, but for now it's just Chicago what, what worries me. Is that okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you, sir.